Hey guys, so I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast the other day. I'm sure you're familiar with it. It's the most popular podcast, I think, in the world. And something came up that I wasn't expecting, and that was a conversation about eye health and different ways of treating common eye conditions. So let's start the video. You can get a little bit of my reaction uh, to what Joe had to yeah. say. Old dude. Or he can't, doesn't have his glasses, so he yep. can't see what you wrote him. <laughs> a lot of this. Oh, no. Yep. That's the sad part about being our age is anytime I go look at this meme, all my friends have to put glasses yeah. on. Yep. So for context, they're just talking about Robert De Niro, who is in his 80s and had a child. And they were kind of making a, a little bit about uh, De Niro having trouble texting because he's older and it's harder for him to see things up close. So that's what Joe's doing here. That's the sad part about being our age is anytime I go look at this meme, all my friends have to put glasses yeah. on and start holding. Just like, oh, Christ, <laughs> and humiliation. Yeah, so Neil is talking about presbyopia. Presbyopia is a fancy sounding word, but what it means in Greek is old man eyes. As you get older, usually 40 and up, that it becomes harder and harder for the lens inside your eye to flex to give you a range of vision to see up close. So that's what we're talking about here, presbyopia, the issue seeing up close when you get a little bit older. So keep that in mind, we're talking about the lens here, not the retina, lens. You can mitigate some of that. Um, there's a there's a, there's there's certain vitamins that you can take that stop macular degeneration. Um. Okay, so wait a minute. weren't we just talking about the lens? We were. So Joe just completely switched the game here, and now he's talking about the retina and age-related macular degeneration. That is a disease. There is such a thing called as AMD. But with AMD, it tends to be much older patients, like 60s, 70s, 80s. And there are vitamins, the AREDS2 vitamins, uh, that were well studied and shown to reduce the risk of trans or of worsening of AMD from intermediate stage to severe stage. So it's very specific uh, indication uh, or use for that uh, vitamin. Uh, so again, he's talking about a different eye problem now and a different treatment and just keep that in mind. Uh, Pure Encapsulations has a macular support formula. But does it work? It's legit, yeah, it stopped it. Now Joe doesn't, have, to my knowledge, have age-related macular degeneration. He's just getting older. Just getting older in and of itself is not age-related macular degeneration as far as what we define it uh, as a doctor or what we call that disease. I think he just literally means as I get older, my macula and my retina don't work as well as they used to. And that's true, we know that. Uh, but just to be super clear here, there's no evidence that either AREDS2 or the pure encapsulation macular support vitamin mixture that he's talking about uh, makes a difference. Whew. All right, big segue. Let's keep going. Yeah, a little better with red light too, red light therapy. You have a red light bed that I lie in. And that, do you, are your eyes open? Yeah, yeah, keep your eyes open. And uh, you're laying in a bed? Yeah, it's just staring at red lights, just chilling. Usually I just listen to books. Okay, so what is Joe talking about here? It's actually pretty interesting. He's talking about this concept that red light helps mitochondrial or retinal function improve. There is a study from the University College London. I'm holding it right here in my hand. This study looked at about 24 patients or subjects. No, not hundreds or thousands like you would hope or expect for a study this widely cited in the media, just 24. And they gave them a little flashlight. It was a 670 nanometer red light flashlight that they put on their eye for three minutes in the morning. They had a 17% uh, average improvement in their ability to make red green color uh, differentiation and then a 12% ability or improvement in ability to make a blue yellow color vision discrimination. In the study they used pretty low power or low intensity 670 nanometer light but in the wild it can be much higher and you can have phototoxicity from that stronger more powerful light so you end up hurting the retina when you're trying to help the retina. Scary. So buyer beware, doctor or patient beware in these situations because it's just not proven yet. Is there potential here? Sure, there's a lot of interesting data in animals in, in this too that show that red light may help patients uh, and may help the mitochondria work a little bit better, but I would definitely not recommend that at this time to anyone I see in the clinic. I hope that clarified some things from this episode. I really enjoyed it, um, and that's it. Signing off, Dr. Metard here. Take care.